There are places where it just seems obvious we should build high-speed rail in the U.S. The Northeast Corridor, California, Texas. But what can we expect from those new lines if they ever get built? Well, it turns out the world is full of high-speed rail lines that connect pairs of cities that really closely mimic the best candidate pairs of cities in the United States. And these are what I call high-speed rail twins. And today we're gonna dive into them. Welcome to City Nerd, where high-speed rail in the United States is something that just needs to happen. Remember to click all the relevant buttons below so you can help this video find its way out of the eternal darkness of the YouTube algorithm. So today I wanted to take a closer look at city pairs in the United States are the, the most ripe for high-speed rail connection. But I wanted to look at each one of the city pairs through the lens of another pair of cities somewhere in the world where, number one, there's already a high-speed connection in place. Number two, the two cities are of kind of similar sizes to their U.S. counterparts. And three, where the distance between the two cities is fairly similar. So remember, these variables are going to be really kind of key in determining how competitive high-speed rail is with air travel and highway travel. It's really about the sizes of the respective cities and the distance between. And if you want to see the more exhaustive explanation of that, um, you can go take a look at my video where I rank the top 10 city pairs in the United States. I'll leave a link down in the description, but in all likelihood, it's over in your recommended videos right now. So I'm going to share information on operating characteristics for high-speed lines from around the world, as well as competing air and highway travel options. To keep things consistent, I chose from travel options for September 30th of 2021, which is about six weeks out from this video. And keep in mind, we're still in a worldwide pandemic, so it may affect the number of flights or trains that you see available. Also for each city pair, I'm going to show travel times and costs for rail, air, and highway. But keep in mind, this leaves out the travel time to and from the stations themselves or the airports, which is kind of a big variable in any individual person's choice of which travel mode to use. For a lot of these trips, the cab ride to and from the airport on each end is going to be more expensive than the flight itself. And also the cost of driving varies quite a bit by country, just based on gas prices alone, let alone cost of registering a vehicle or VATs. But we'll talk about that more when we get into it. So let's go ahead and get started with number 10. Number 10 on my list was Miami to Orlando. Now there are 13 flights a day and you can make the drive, it's about three and a half hours. Your comparable city pair is Madrid to Valencia in Spain. The flight time and the drive time is very similar to Miami to Orlando, and even the airfare is really similar. But there are only four flights a day, and the reason why is because there's a high-speed train link available. The Renfe runs 12 trains a day with a travel time of an hour 40. It's got a lower ticket price, and it goes from central city to central city. So the travel time is 40 minutes longer than the plane, but you save all that time and more by avoiding the hike to the airport and the slog through security and boarding. Interestingly, uh, Google Flights actually gives you the high-speed rail trips as options to compare to the plane. My understanding is each train has capacity for about 365 passengers, and the planes are, they're prop planes, they're Bombardiers and Embraers, they carry about 100 people. So really, um, the trains are carrying about 10 times the capacity as the planes between these two cities. Number nine was Chicago to Detroit. There are 24 flights a day, and it's about a four and a half hour drive. We're going to Taiwan for the comp here. And so this is the high-speed rail line between Taipei and Kaohsiung. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know. Actually, I can't tell if it's because air would just not be competitive with rail or if there's actually a national policy. But as we get down the list, you'll actually see there are other city pairs where there is actually no availability for direct flights between the two cities. The rail connection gets you from Taipei to Kaohsiung in about an hour 40. And the service runs about 64 trains a day. So I don't know, I mean, it's hard to see 
air travel being competitive when you can just show up at a station downtown and hop on the next train, which is probably in the next 10 minutes. Number eight is Boston to Philadelphia. There are six Acela runs right now, daily. The runtime on that train is about five hours, which is almost the same as driving or there are 12 flights a day and the flight runs about an hour and a half. So you can see why it's kind of hard to compete with air right now. So for the comp, we're going to Italy and looking at Milan to Rome. The flight time and the drive time are actually pretty similar to Boston to Philadelphia, but you've actually got two high-speed rail options. You've got the state-run Frecchia Rosa and you've got the private Italo. And combined, they run about 64 trains a day, so similar to Taipei to Kaohsiung. You just show up at a station downtown, you're gonna be getting on a train in 10 minutes. Air travel does not work like that. Number seven, I had Los Angeles to Las Vegas. This is about a four hour drive. Um, and there are about 70 planes a day, it's a lot of planes. The comp is London to Brussels on the Eurostar and that run is about an hour 50. So I just wonder how many of those 70 planes you have going from LA to Las Vegas would still be in the air if you had a travel option that got you from downtown LA to the Strip in less than two hours. Number six was LA to the Bay Area. This is, I don't know, probably a six hour drive. But then remember, there are all kinds of airport combinations you can use to get from the LA area up to the Bay Area. Depending on where exactly in LA you're starting from and where you're headed for in the Bay Area. So all told, there are something like 150 flights a day. For the comp, we're going to China. This is Beijing to Shenyang and makes the run in three hours and 20 minutes with 30 trains a day. You can see that air travel is actually still competitive here just because of the long distance. But there's only 10 flights a day and eh, they're pretty pricey. So California High Speed Rail is aiming for two hours and 40 minutes to make this trip. And I would say that would make it extremely competitive with air if they can make that happen, depending on where your particular origin and destination are. The number five is Dallas to Houston. It's about a three and a half hour drive. I believe there are over 40 flights a day and the flight is around an hour 20. For the comp, we're going to China again and this time it's Xi'an to Zhengzhou. It's a slightly longer distance, but there are no direct flights available between these two cities. Instead of a direct flight, you get 90 trains a day that make the run in around an hour 45 and costs you like 35 bucks. I don't think the Texas Central Railway is proposing to run 90 trains a day or to charge 35 bucks, <laughs> but they can be quite a bit higher on the fare and probably higher on the travel time and lower on the frequency, and it'll still be extremely competitive with flying and driving. In fact, Texas Central is proposing to make the run in 90 minutes, wow with departures every 30 minutes in peak period. So obviously nowhere near the frequency of Xi'an to Zhengzhou, but extremely competitive for the United States market. Number four was Washington to Philadelphia. This segment of the Acela line is actually probably the best performing as far as how fast the run is. It's a little over an hour and a half and eight turns a day. Obviously not good frequency by world standards, but as good as it gets in the US. You can fly if you want, and it's an hour flight, 129 bucks. Driving's a nightmare, it's almost three hours. So the Acela is actually a pretty good option here. The comp I'm gonna use is in Germany. We're gonna do Dusseldorf to Frankfurt. Dusseldorf is not by any stretch the same size as DC, but if you look at the whole amalgamation of cities in that rural area with Cologne and Essen and Dortmund, you do get up to eight to 10 million people. The ice train makes this run in 90 minutes. It runs about 24 times a day and it's only $22. So as relatively good as the Acela is in this segment, you know, that's, that's how much better things can be. Three is New York to Philadelphia, which is the shortest distance I have on my list, but it connects obviously our largest city and, and another very large city. 
You actually don't have flights between New York and Philadelphia. Distance is too short, doesn't make any sense. The train gets you there in a little over an hour. Eight trains a day, about $87. And the drive is, I don't know, typically horrendous, close to two hours. So the train's a pretty good option here as well. For the comp, we're gonna go to Japan and we're gonna look at actually Osaka. You know, Tokyo, Tokyo is its own it's just on a different level. Um, I just don't consider it a comp for New York, but I do consider Osaka. Osaka is close to 20 million in its own metropolitan area. And the connection to Nagoya, which is about a Philadelphia size city, is around the same distance, close to 100 miles. So this one's going to be a little odd because really the frequency of the trains is more dictated by the amount of demand for the Tokyo end of the line. So you get an absurd amount of frequency. There are 125 trains making this run every day. And the run between Osaka and Nagoya is about 48 minutes. Better than the run time between New York and Philadelphia, but not enormously better. But the convenience of it, I mean, you can show up at the station. That thing's running like every five minutes, right? Now we get to the two big ones on our list. Um, two was New York to Boston. And this is kind of the rough segment for the Acela where they need the most improvements to the corridor. There's only six trains a day between Boston and New York, and it's a three hour, 45 minute run. And air is still super competitive. You've got 30 plus flights a day, making that trip in an hour 20 at something like half the price of the train. So, you know, the fare structure and the frequency and the run time are just not really competitive. For the comp here, we're going to Korea. Oh, South Korea, obviously. Um, and we're looking at Seoul to Busan. Seoul is your New York comp, Busan is your Boston comp. And it just kind of shows you what an improved Acela could look like. This line runs 64 trains a day. The run time's two and a half hours, which is kind of on the high side, honestly, for this distance. And the fare is $69. So you can see that if Boston to New York had those kinds of operating characteristics and, and that kind of fare, probably not running nearly as many planes on that route. And number one is New York to Washington, which is the Acela route with the highest ridership. Runs eight trains a day. Ticket will run you about uh, $140 and it's making that run in about three hours. The air travel option is pretty similar to New York to Boston. There are around 30 to 35 planes a day. The airfare will run you about 70 bucks and the flight takes about an hour 20. So even though this is the highest ridership route on the Amtrak system, it's still getting a lot of competition from air. The drive is, I don't know, it's close to four and a half hours. So. Car travel is not super competitive, unless you've got like four people in your car. For the comp, we're going back to China one more time, and this time it's Shanghai to Nanjing. The distance is a little shorter. It's a little under 200 miles, but there are no flights available. And why would there be? They run about 150 trains a day. The travel time on the train is typically around an hour 20, although there are some, I guess they must be express routes that go in closer to an hour. And the train fare is around <laughs> $22. So if you think of New York to Washington as being our highest ridership train route, this is how much it could be improved, right? To get the same service that you get in China between a city pair that's somewhat comparable. I know Shanghai is probably a little bigger than New York, but just think about cutting the travel time in half cutting the fare by 80%. You should really be able to remove air travel as an option from most of the Acela corridor. So you know, just think about what that means in terms of CO2 emissions or freeing up runway slots to places where rail is never really gonna be a good option, like overseas, obviously, or I don't know. Texas, California. Anyway, let me know, comment down below if you've got other ideas about world city bears that would be good comparables to what we've got in the United States. Drop a like on the video and as always, subscribe if you're new. Thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.